Work continues on the ship, but the normal traffic of 3,000 sailors is too much when spaces are being torn apart. To adapt and continue carrier operations, some departments have been picked up and moved to the barge. The barge is a massive support platform that sits at the end of the pier. Master Chief Joseph Birds is tasked with overseeing its daily operations. Reality is the reason we're in the yards is to get Nimitz ready to go back to sea. So as much as we can keep Nimitz ready to go to sea uh, with the things that are on there, we want to keep the, those services provided there. But as for now, with most of the service functions of Nimitz, as far as services provided to sailors are, are here on board the barge, i.e. medical, dental, the media functions, the admin functions, the career counseling, the library, the religious ministries, and then obviously the, the mess halls, you know, making sure that uh, people are getting fed. Helping feed the crew is one of the ways the Command Master Chief is keeping operations going. Sailors like, are proud of what they do, and, and they like to, to, uh, to show me, and, and they really like it when I get involved. Uh, I do enjoy just serving chow. It's really something simple. It's not hard. I can just jump in the line. I've got my food handler's card and, uh, and serve sailors and get to see them. Uh, that's one way to see the whole crew. Everybody got to eat, uh, especially underway, so I definitely enjoy doing that. I'm here to ensure that uh, the sailors are taken care of and that they're, uh, they're led. You know, we can't fix it if we don't know. Uh, and they, like I said during my check-in interview, that I tell every sailor I'm their advocate. I'm the one here that ensures they get three squares a day, they got a place to sleep, they have a non-threatening work environment, and they're treated fairly. Adamant that nobody, doesn't matter what you wear on your collar, nobody gets a free pass. I know people have been passing How you know it's your mates? Good. Taking in there ready for the weekend? Yeah. I definitely um, enjoy that as being the best part of my day is get to interact with sailors. All right, who's getting the Friday fresh cut? The Friday, who's oh, getting that? They'll come in, they'll be like, hey, who's, who's getting a fresh one today? Like, and they'll walk by, they'll check out everybody's heads. And I don't, I don't really know if he's making sure like everybody's in regs or not, but he, he's really just checking out to see, you know, just making his rounds. Like, uh, it's pretty good, you know, for him to come in like that because it makes it more personal, you know, for the crew. People can see him, like, in that setting. Our morale has to be high in order to boost the ship's morale, so you will probably see us at the silly a lot. Basically, uh, I come in every morning, put the list out, uh, and get to cutting. I cut hair every day. Everybody, um, basically is aware that uh, we have a barbershop here on the barge, so we actually don't do any, any haircuts on the ship uh, right now, because it's, it's kind of under renovation. Just keep operations going. Uh, the only thing we had to really do was just cut down a little bit on the amount of people that would come in and get their haircut, uh, just because, like, like, the... Washington, I guess, Bremerton area is supposed to be able to accommodate, you know, when a ship pulls in. And so, um, we'll, we'll take on extra people, but for the most part, you know, it's kind of like everybody's for themselves when we're over here. While some sailors are adjusting to new working conditions in the yards, some sailors are just getting used to a new life in the fleet. Today, Seaman Wallace Pelasasa is starting his first day of work aboard USS Nimitz. This is his first command in the Navy. I'm brand new. I'm right out of A school. Um, I have no idea what I'm in for today, actually. I'm kind of nervous. Today is like 
I think it's supposed to be like my actual first day of work. I'm not sure. We have a lot of paperwork to go through today and I'm not all that excited. The sight of a massive carrier is the first thing new sailors must adjust to. I look over and there's this huge city just like sitting right there. That's what I thought. Coming aboard for the first time, Pelasasa must meet up with his sponsor, another sailor assigned to guide him through his first few days. They go further into the ship to meet with his new co-workers and get his orders for the day. Being surrounded by new strangers can be like the first day of school. It's a lot different. In boot camp they're really, really strict. And when you get to A school they're strict, but then they're also like lenient about things. I can't wait to like start meeting new people and start working. I am one of eight kids. Um, my parents are from Samoa and they're, they live in Alaska right now. It's hard for them to take care of um, all eight. I mean, not that it's impossible or anything. It's just, you know, growing up, it was always, um, it was always, my parents are like struggling to pay bills and struggling to uh, take care of all eight kids and trying to make us happy and at the same time provide for us. It's hard to transition, but I'm getting there. <laughs> his sponsor quickly goes over the stack of papers he was given upon his arrival. This will be the longest part of his check-in process. Today, Pelasasa will follow his sponsor through different parts of the ship and barge to get everything he needs to be a new part of the crew. I just started following him. I had absolutely no idea where I was going. I just started following him, and somehow we ended up in the ABF. V4 division in this office. That was day one. <laughs> There's a lot of hurry up and wait involved in the check-in process. With all the work going on, new check-ins can wait long periods of time before getting their paperwork filled out. I I came in as an undesignated airman. When you join the Navy, you join for a reason, right? I think it's really cool to be undesignated because then I get to like try different areas. When, uh, when I was talking to my uh, sponsor, he told me that they put me into the V4 division, and that's ABF, Aviation Boats are Made Fueling. Um, they're really cool, really awesome people. A lot of things, like I said, over the next couple of weeks, a lot of things are going to happen and it's going to be quick pace for you and then it's going to slow down. Right now, and just right? got to work for them for two years and then I can finally strike in a rate that I want and I want to be a corpsman. Um, I know it's going to be a lot of work. I know it's going, to, it's going to be a huge challenge physically, mentally, but I'm totally going to do it. It's going to be awesome. I mean, that is like hey. I'm a corpsman and also one of the two lab techs here on the USS Nimitz. Um, I do anything from drawing blood to running different lab tests. Uh, ideally, I joined the military because I wanted to go into medical school, right? And lab school gives you about 60 some credits, I think, because it's year long. And with that, I got my associate's degree, so I'm about halfway through to put my package in. On the ship, I guess, doing stuff that's outside of being a lab tech is actually my favorite part. I've been in a lab tech for like seven years now, so there's not too much I haven't seen already. But as far as being a lab tech, my favorite part of that is working with microbiology or blood banking. That's where you actually end up helping people out the most. You can like diagnose diseases or um, like find bacterial infections and help, treat, help doctors treat those infections, which is really cool. I'm actually sharing this space with dental, so I'm cramped for space. It's just not my own space, so you know I don't have my own little groove going right now. But get the job done anyway, you know. With the work that's going on in medical and dental right now, they're replacing all the dental chairs. So as you can tell, this bar just set up for dental and medical readiness. 
to keep the readiness of the sailors so that when we do get ready to go back to sea, we have a, a ready ship and ready personnel to go with. To continue more of the vital operations, some sailors had to move boxes of equipment to the barge and make a big adjustment to the new work environment. The hardest part was just settling in and getting back into like a routine um, that we're used to. It's different being here on the barge. We have more, it seems like more traffic. It's harder to get a hold of people. It's you don't see the same people, there's people on the ship, there's people on the barge, there's people working in different areas, so it's, that's like the most thing, it's just the adjustment period from working on the ship to work on the barge. Yeah, you probably have to use the high-speed one. The high-speed? No, the high-speed Oh, the high-speed? Section. But here we don't have enough spaces, we barely have enough spaces for the docs to do and see their patients. Um, for things like BMRs and appointments and stuff like that. So the, MD, the MDU, the mobile dental unit, is purely cleanings um, for patients. And then when we run out of appointments, then we start sending people out into town um, to see civilian dentists. We had seven rooms, seven operatories where, you know, the dentist and the oral surgeon and the hygienist, we could see our patients daily. Um, we each had our own room and then when we moved over to the barge, we went down to four rooms. So we basically had two providers with nowhere to work. Um, we took turns going over to the clinic on base. That's, we were sending patients over there for a while until we got the mobile dental unit from Everett. On the barge, personnel is one more department going through this change. What our job is, is um, you know, the new personnel come in and what we do is we check them into the ship systems like RADM, um, it's an admin program that allows you to muster people. Um, we take their service record from them, which now uh, a lot of the people coming out of A school, they have the new electronic service records, they don't even have a physical hard copy service record anymore. So what we do is uh, we have them sign page 13s, which are um, administrative notices um, with all the Nimitz policies on them. And then we provide them with a check-in card to which they go around to all the departments on the ship um, and they get it signed off showing that they check them in. They're in their systems now and then we turn them back over to the department that uh, their rating is relevant to. And then uh, they, took, they take over from there. So. We had to move 3,000 service records, and that that isn't fun. I would say it is a little bit more irritating working on the the barge. Um, you know, it it's not always fun to transition from one place to another when you get settled in somewhere, and then eventually I'll have to just go back and you know, go back to my other workplace, which I wouldn't mind. But um, we used to have to worry about the door getting knocked on every 10 seconds and personnel on the ship and. We did not get anything accomplished. But here, you know, we have a window we can shut, and people don't knock on our door as much, so we're able to accomplish more work. You know, once the, the, the window shut, we're closed. Closed. We're closed means we, we're closed. So um, I believe it, it benefits us more in the aspect that, yes, we do have a lot of work to catch up on, but we're slowly catching up on it, and we are getting more work than we would have accomplished um, on the ship. So. Hey, no, sir, as I travel around the ship, I talk to sailors, uh, try to get a feel for how, how they're doing. Uh, it, it's been a big transition moving up here from San Diego to, uh, to Bremerton, Washington. Um, admittedly, the weather up here since we've been up here has been kind of nasty. Uh, it's a different environment. It's a shipyard environment. Uh, like I tell sailors that check in with me, I know they didn't join the Navy to, to chip and lag and, and paint and, and do all the deck grinding and the things that we're doing that we have to do while we're in the shipyard. Um, uh, but I also, you know, I ask them to, to, to stay motivated because everything they do does matter and, and it's going to pay dividends when we get back out into the fleet. CMC day off. If they find this, which means they're cleaning. 
and doing their job, they get a day off when they bring it back to me. This is the work of ship's force, not contractors, not shipyard. Completely redoing this berthing from the decks, the lockings, the lockers, the racks, to installing the lighting. Completely done by ship's force and done just as professionally as any contractor or shipyard worker could do. Proud of those guys. The ship, the ship right now is considered uninhabitable. We're not eating on the ship. There's a very limited use of uh, the heads on board the, and, and also there's no ventilation and what have you for the uh, air conditioning. It's just, it's not habitable based on the fact that it's not heated right now. It's not air conditioned. It doesn't have all of the uh, typical things that make it inhabitable when we're actually at sea. So as that increases as those spaces become more available then people will move back but for now we have to provide a space for all those sailors who are on uh, who are on duty thousands of feet of cable have been rerun it's amazing everything that gets done during these old holes another work day is complete within the controlled industrial area Sailors and shipyard workers pile into buses or walk back to their barracks. Outside of working in the shipyard, Seaman Ian Kowalczyk is on his way to Everett to volunteer his time for Sea Cadets, a program that helps civilians prepare for the military. Um, today we're going to go and uh, visit a platoon of sea cadets in Everett um, and it's going to be my first time interacting with sea cadets um, and hopefully I'll uh, be able to learn some things today and uh, eventually I'll uh, be able to work my way up to be an instructor for them. Sea cadets is like ROTC, um, like in high school for some kids, you know, they dress up in uniform and do military activities. Um, Except Sea Cadets, uh, I believe, goes more in depth, and uh, they do a lot uh, more activities naval-related, like we do, like PT. Um, they have their own PRT, I think. Um, they have uniform inspections, things like that. I think it's it's good for us to interact with the community. It's good for us to reach out there and interact with children. You know, for children to be able to see us and get to know us and get to know what we do. Um, that way they understand it better. And um, I think that uh, hopefully I'll be able to make a positive influence in a lot of kids' lives. Kowalczyk is just one sailor from the Washington area helping train these future service members. It's a good group of kids. Um, there's a lot of them that are really young, uh, early middle school even, and uh, some as far as senior in high school. Uh, one kid, I think he said he's in college right now. Um, must have graduated early. I know a few people that did that, but um, they're good. A lot of them seem to be lacking motivation right now. I think it's just because they've had a lot of classwork, but um, my goal is to hopefully get in there and make them enjoy what they're doing because you can see about half of them are only enjoying it, and I want to see all of them enjoy it. I want to see all of them get in there and start learning more about the Navy and uh, hopefully excel in this program, you know, be able to advance. Hopefully I'll be able to make a difference in some of these kids' lives. And that's what I want to do today. To this, to this date, we don't really have a, a lot of uh, active duty sailors that come and visit us or even volunteer for the unit. And with the Nimitz coming to the area, I think it brings a lot of uh, good training that's going to come from, you know, the, the, the sailors from the Nimitz, uh, experiences shared. Because a lot of these cadets right here plan on joining the, the military. They want role models. They want to see if they can model after somebody who's already had the experience. Uh, every time we pull in and out of port, I'm in the 50 cows. And it's called full bore. 
and we all uh, we all man the 50 cows to prevent any fast-moving craft from attacking us. If you if you take those core values in, in anything they do, uh, be it school or any other activities, you know they they they, they get disciplined, they get military bearing, and you stand out among other people that haven't had the training or exposure into this program. It could be too can be really down. hard. But I, today I, th I think I'm going to use the uh, strategy of uh, puke at the end. I, that can make me sprint all the way. Either that or there's a giant monster behind me. Go, go, go! Come on! Sometimes on the mile run, uh, some people call me uh, shadow at school because I'm in last place of everybody else. I'm behind everybody. I'm the shadow of everybody else. I guess that's kind of a cool name, but the hell it means, I don't really care for it. Hopefully, this mile run, I can uh, bump up to Sonic the Hedgehog. Last time. Keep it going. Oh. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. Go, go, go. Go, hunt. Just keep running at that pace. On the other side of Bremerton, EM3 Albert Alvarez has started a climbing club in his off time to get his fellow sailors active in the area. I did a, an MWR event for my entire division as the MWR rep and I took everyone out to the climbing gym just because I wanted to share it with them. And I got a very positive response. Um, a lot of people enjoyed it, they wanted to do it again. And feet. so uh, I, took, right I took that initiative from then on to, to progress it and start inviting everyone from the ship and, and make a club out of it. The, the biggest goal for the club is to get people outdoors and, and doing more things outside. Um, the gym is really fun. You have this great safe environment to learn. But uh, the biggest goal of the club is to take people outdoors. And, and that's what I've been doing. I've been taking more and more people outdoors. And then you get all the scenery, the camping, and everything that goes along with rock climbing. And, and I think that's where you get a true feel of, of how amazing rock climbing is, because you can get some great scenery once you get to the top of a climb. So this helps with upper body push-ups and, and arm strength, so that'll definitely uh, work their upper body. And then core strength, which is your abs, is greatly worked on the wall the, the better you get. And so uh, I'd say indirectly, everyone's getting prepared for the PRT when they climb. Oh man, I remember the first month I started climbing, arms were dead, you know? <laughs> but uh, yeah, it builds strength. It builds strength quick and you feel it. Every time you come, you feel yourself get better. Uh, builds confidence, builds friendships. It's just a building activity. It's better than going to the bar. You know, you're in Washington, it's either the bar, go out and do something. Well, this is going out and do something. Back in the controlled industrial area, not all Nimitz sailors have left for the day. Sailors on duty must stay overnight on the barge to keep operations running. Barge life is a lot like living on the ship, except a little worse in some aspects. I mean, for one, these things right here don't have space in it at all for clothes like those storage lockers do in the, in, the, in the ship. You got these little things here. Oh, this one's here. And these things, they might be taller, but they don't store as much stuff at all as those, those coffin lockers, because those things are humongous. And you don't have any privacy at all, because on, on the ship you got one side curtain and then one side is a bulkhead. Here you just got two curtains. I don't know, it's just kind of, it's, it's got its ups and downs compared to the ship. I'm staying here because, you know, I'm trying to save money. Uh, I mean, I don't have a car, but it, I mean, that, would, that, that really isn't the reason. It's just I don't have money to spend. I'm trying to save up for a lot of different things, going to school. This is a good place. Since you don't have anything to do, you're bored all the time. You just kind of do productive stuff. The food here, it's actually not that bad. It's just a little expensive. I mean, they, they're giving us comrades, but I don't know. It's, kinda, it's still kind of cheaper to try to buy your own food. But here, with the limited space, it's kind of contradicting. So you kind of pretty much have to put money in your Navy cash card and buy food here. Eating here is something you pretty much got to do every day if you live here unless you're willing to just eat ramen noodles and Pop-Tarts all day. Another day complete. Sailors in and out of the shipyard can relax for the night. 
As soon as the sun rises, their work will continue. The adjustment period is over. From here on out, it's just another day in dry dock.